Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe how the scientist Alfred Russell Wallace contributed to our understanding of evolution. You should then be able to describe how new species form, and this is for triple biology students only. In the last video we saw that Charles Darwin developed the theory of evolution by natural selection, and we looked at how this works. Now another scientist was also working on evolution at the same time as Darwin, and this scientist was called Alfred Russell Wallace. I'm showing you a picture of Wallace here. Wallace travelled all over the world looking at different animals and plants. He was interested in warning coloration in animals. I'm showing you an example here. The bright red colour of this frog is thought to warn predators that the frog is poisonous. Wallace wanted to know how warning colours had evolved. As a result of his studies, Wallace independently proposed the theory of evolution by natural selection. Darwin and Wallace realised that they both developed the same theory, so in 1858 they jointly published their findings. And the following year, Darwin published On the Origin of Species, which presented natural selection to a wider audience. Now, one area that Wallace was especially interested in was how new species form. Scientists call this process speciation. Wallace noticed that closely related species were often separated by geographical barriers such as a wide river. Since then, more evidence has led to our current understanding of speciation. Now in the exam, you could be asked to describe how new species form. This is a very common exam question, so you need to make sure that you learn the stages. We're going to look at speciation in snails, but this could apply to any organism. I'm showing you here an island containing one species of snails. All of these snails can interbreed so any beneficial mutation spreads through the whole population. Now imagine that the river changes course, and it separates the population of snails into two groups. Scientists say that the river is a geographical barrier. Because the two populations are now separate, there's no interbreeding between the two groups of snails. Over time, natural selection will favour different alleles on the two sides of the island. For example, the food sources on one side of the island might be slightly different compared to the other side. Now because there's no interbreeding between the two populations of snails, any mutations that occur cannot spread between the two populations. This means that over many generations the two populations of snails will begin to change. Ok, now imagine that the river changes course again, and the two populations of snails can mix. At this point, the phenotypes of the two populations of snails are so different that they can no longer reproduce to make fertile offspring. Now the snails are two different species. So the key point is that in order for speciation to take place, we need a geographical barrier to separate a population into two and prevent interbreeding between the two populations. Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on speciation in my Vision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above.